This is an 8 ball 2 short wheelbase camper conversion video walk round which should hopefully give you some hints and tips when you are camping. First of all I'd like to show you the 8 ball camper control unit. In the camper nothing will work, the lights and the charge points, when the camper control unit is turned off. However, the one thing that will work is the fridge. There is a little snowflake button. Basically, all you do to turn the fridge on when the camper unit's not turned on is press the snowflake button. It will say fridge on and the fridge will turn on down there. The only thing to check is every now and again, I'd just check your fridge that you haven't left it on by accident because it could flatten your leisure battery and you never want to drain your leisure battery totally flat if you leave it on constantly. So I'll turn the fridge off. So when I want to use anything else on the camper control unit, you turn it on here at the eight ball button. Then you can automatically use the light. Some up here on this light switch here. There's a bed light, which is up there. And there is also a strip light above the sink. You will notice that the WSB there has started to work and the little blue LED light is on. And then you can scroll through the menu screen on the control unit. It shows you the time. There is a setting section. It tells you how much water is in the water tank. It tells you the temperature of the inside of the van, which is 11 degrees, and also the voltage of the battery. It is only a basic voltage measuring system, but if it goes below 12 volts, what that means is your leisure battery needs charging. And then it goes back to time. The 240 electrics, which is there's a three pin plug here and there is also one in that cupboard down there, automatically work when you are plugged into the mains, but they don't work unless you are plugged into the mains. And as soon as you plug into the mains hookup, it automatically charges your leisure battery. And also when you are driving, the leisure battery is automatically charged by the engine as you go along. Here is the sink and tap. At the moment, the tap will not work. If I press the little tap button, it says pump on. And you lift it up, tap works. The tap will automatically turn off if the water tank ever gets to 0%, just to save your electrical system so the pump doesn't burn out. And that is the eight ball control unit. And I want to tell you about the gas system. For gas regulations, we have a gas drop vent there. We have a gas stop tap here. And the gas cooker is up here. We have a sparker here and cooker knobs here and here. And you just push and twist. And once it's lit, after a few seconds, it will stay on. The one thing to make sure is you make sure both the rings are fully cold before you put the lid down as it says on here, because you can shatter the glass lid. We also have a carbon monoxide detector down here and a fire extinguisher here. What we also have here is our gas locker with a 3.9 propane gas bottle in it, which is a color bottle. We always suggest you have your gas bottle turned off at the top of the bottle at all times. If you ever want to use your cooker, come and turn it on at the bottle. And when you finish turning it off, which makes it safe. If you do that, this bottle will last for well over a year. And you should get your gas checked once a year by an LPG gas engineer. I mentioned earlier about hooking up to the mains hookup to power up your 240 sockets and charging up your leisure battery. And the hookup point is here, just under the back bumper. In front of your gas locker here, we have your main PDU with all your circuit breakers and 12 volt fuses. And in an eight ball three van, it's behind the driver's seat. The drain for the sink is under here. And there is also a drain for the water tank, which is under here. And in winter, if you ever want to drain your tank or the water's been there for too long, you can just turn the tap and dump all the water from the internal tank. I'm now going to show you how to use the Kiravan double seat swivel. There are a few hints and tips which will make it a lot easier for you to use. First of all, make sure the driver's seat is fully back. 
the handbrake off while you spin the seat and it either in park or in first gear. Then you unscrew all these screws. This is the last one. When it becomes loose, lift it and spin it with a little pin round like that, which pulls all the threads clear from the base of the seat. Then you grab hold of the seat, slide it forwards and always spin it to the passenger door. If you spin it to the passenger door, it does spin very easily, like so. When you're finished, you can lock it off in the spun round position. After spinning the seat, put your handbrake back on. When you are spinning it back, you undo these again, push it forwards, and then just go back the way you came. Like so. Start all your threads off in all four of the lock offs, including the front, before you tighten them up. I'm now going to show you how to use your rib seat. It's only got three levers and it's very easy to use. First of all, you put your hand down there, lift that lever up, put your hand on the back of the seat, and then flip the front cushion over like so. When it's level, let go of the lever, pushing it down to make sure it is locked out. You then kneel on the seat, you grab this big metal bar here, lift it up, put it down, and there is another lever here that you can adjust the rear cushion up and back down again. When you want to put the seat back up to the seated position, you put your hand down here, you flip that up, lock it back out again, then you grab the seat belts on both sides, there is also one there. You grab this lever here, flip it over, pull the seat belts out like so, and then lower your seat back down. The other good thing about the rib seat is you get all the storage here and you get all the storage here. But if you want a big space in the boot, you can flip the back cushion up and you get a very large boot. I'm now going to show you how to elevate your elevating roof. This is an os top roof, which is our standard roof. Before elevating your roof, you must always have a door or window fully open because the roof will not go up due to vacuum and also when you're pulling the roof down it will push the canvas out and it can damage the canvas. We have a door or window fully open already so we will now undo the straps. You put your finger on there and loosen the straps so the strap goes to about the height of the top of the seat like so. You just do this one Then all you need to do is push the roof up. You then need to release this strap from here, which is the thing that pulls the sides of the canvas inwards and the bed will not go up until you have removed that. And now you can just push the bed up like so. There is a vent here and there is a vent here and there is a window here. When you want to pull your roof down, again, you need to make sure you've got a door or window fully open. Even if it's raining or super windy, just be careful. You first of all, pull the roof bed down, like so. You reattach the elastic strap onto the side. Now you grab hold of the straps and you pull it down to about here. What I do is I push the window and the front canvas forwards once and then it folds back once and forwards once. At all points making sure that the canvas is folding inwards. At this point I always come outside of the van and just double check the canvas is folding inwards. 
like so. Your responsibility to make sure the canvas never goes anywhere near these scissor hinges. It's the same on a Remo roof, an SCA roof, and an Ostop roof, and every elevating roof. At this point, you pull the roof down a little bit more, and then fold the canvas in the middle, so you've just got a nice, neat fold here. At all points while pulling the roof down, double check it is still folding inward and you pull it down a little bit further. And remember, three folds. Once forwards, once back, and then once forwards. And then I grab all the canvas straps in my hand, lower it down gently, double checking I have all the straps in my hands and nothing is caught in the front. I then carefully pull that strap through like that. Pull that strap through like that. And then just give them a light nip. So it's just like that, like that, like that, like that. And all you are doing, just make sure that rubber is just squashed to the van. And then you just store your straps neatly on top of the bed and the roof is down.